Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Thanksgiving weekend is upon us. Three games on Thanksgiving. Got the Black Friday game. Jeff is here as always. We'll be joined by Sammy P on Thanksgiving for the uh, for the NFL games. A little bit different uh, than normal. John Murray uh, taking the day off to do whatever it is he is doing on uh, this pre-Thanksgiving Wednesday. Uh, again, the group chat coming up as well. And Interesting NFL weekend. How, how did your uh, your trip to Carolina go last week for the uh, the last second Chiefs win over the uh, yeah. Panthers? I did not get the sideline passes bare in the end. I was not able to. Out of the uh, year, no, you are no, not. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I apologize to my son profusely. They were, they were taken away from me at like 9 p.m. on Saturday night. So uh, fun time anyways. Lots of Chiefs fans there. Um, you know, it's, a little, it's an easy little stadium to get in and out of. Uh, it was a good time. Look, I, I thought the game would be a blowout. It wasn't. I did hit a live wager during the game, which was nice. I texted you guys about Kareem Hunt uh, over rushing. Yeah. Thought they'd run the ball in the second half, and they did. So that's oh. always uh, a positive. But it was fun. Look, I it was. I know this sounds maybe weird to say, but I turned to my son at, early in the game. And was like, isn't it wild? I used to do this. Like I point on the field. Like, I used to do this. Like, I used to play. It's just. A, <laughs> it's just like it's been eight years now. Um, and so uh, yeah, the Chiefs won, which was nice. And we'll kind of cover a little bit about that game later because I feel like there's maybe a play this weekend based off of how that game finished. But, Bear, here's the important thing. So Giants-Cowboys is playing in the middle of the day on the East Coast, maybe day to mm-hmm. early evening. It's like prime eating hours for Thanksgiving. What is your plate looking like during Giants-Cowboys game? To A, eat the food, but also B, eat to forget the game you're watching. Uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll, we'll have turkey. Obviously, we'll have cranberry, we'll have stuffing, we'll have some sweet potatoes, we'll have a corn casserole. Um, yeah, just, just your traditional Thanksgiving yeah. favorites. Maybe a little, uh, a little, uh, some, uh, I'm thinking, I can't think of the word, some, some, uh, biscuits as well. Yeah, I'm more of a, uh, a traditionalist Thanksgiving here. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I, uh, I have a kind of a, a hot take here. Like I like turkey. I think people mm-hmm. look at turkey and think they only eat on Thanksgiving. I don't know. A deep fried turkey bear. It's pretty delicious. I, I like. I eat it for days. Yeah. Make sandwiches and have lunches with it. I, I'm a big fan of the fried turkey. Yeah, I, I have. I don't have the uh, the air fryer. I don't have the or, or a fryer for the turkey. Uh, I am very interested in being able to try because I have heard it gets uh, delicious, very very juicy and very very good. But uh, yeah, we the, actually the, the mine my turkey's been in the uh, the brine for a little while now. So yeah, we, we're more of a uh, I like it traditionalist like that. Nice. Now, yeah, do you do you what, do you go anything else besides besides turkey? What what, what do we got? <laughs> I mean, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have some uh, vegetable having what broccolini, uh, homemade mac and cheese. My wife will make that stuffing. Oh. Uh, maybe some rolls. I like my wife likes to make like pigs in a blanket for rappetizer. So you okay. eat those while the, the turkey's cooking. Now I'll mention this a little bit later, but we are more of a lunch turkey family because then we eat the rest of the day. Like our food is set. We just fry one turkey. The earlier the better. It's it's my wife, my kids, and my parents. Like it's just the, the six of us. Um, and we have it for dinner as well. So that's set. I bought some extra legs and wing legs and wings. I'm actually when we're done recording this, I'm gonna go down. I gotta inject it with the Creole butter seasoning, salt, uh, and season the skin. Put it in the fridge or dry, you know, that skin dries out overnight. So it gets a little crispier. And if I, the only thing that's a little, put a little damper on my tomorrow, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So I, I'm curious if that's going to affect my frying schedule because obviously mm-hmm. I can't have the wet, the water, the wet no. water hit the hot oil. So, um, <laughs> no. Well, no, we don't. <laughs> no. So now it is an electric coil. In, in the burner, in the oil. So it's not like an open propane flame at the bottom. So 
it wouldn't blow the house up. It just wouldn't be great to put the water, um, you know, have water or raindrops uh, into the oil. So I may have to create an apparatus with umbrellas and whatnot to cover my frying station. I, I have the utmost confidence in you being able to Thank you. Navigate, navigate the weather situation. So do I. Yeah, I feel good about my, my ability to do that. Do, do I have uh, the utmost confidence in Saquon Barkley now? And I hope Sammy P has the utmost confidence in Saquon Barkley uh, up to minus 275 now to be named uh, Offensive Player of the Year. Um, he had an unbelievable game there. It's Sunday uh, it, against the Rams. Massive favorite now over Derrick Henry. Do we think this market is a foregone conclusion, or can Derrick Henry still uh, swoop in there and uh, – and steal the award from Saquon, who I, I, I think is going to win. Well, the game this weekend will, will go a long way, right, Bear? If Derrick Henry plays better than, than Saquon, the odds might flip. Mm-hmm. But Saquon's so dynamic. He's a dynamic that, that Derrick Henry is just not. And that does, it's not taking away from Derrick Henry, who is an incredible player, will be a Hall of Famer. But Barkley has these highlight runs that look different than Derrick Henry's runs. And I think that will propel him. He has a better offensive line. And now get him the opportunity to win this award. You sent over some some cross sport parlays here to do that find value in Saquon. So you take Saquon Barkley minus the number, put it with a favorite of another sport or a couple other things. I mean, heck, the way the Dodgers are are are, are loading up their lineup right now, put a bar, Dodgers win the World Series, Saquon offensive rookie of the year, I mean, player of the year award, and just sort of wrap them all together because. You're not laying. I, I wouldn't lay three to one right now on this award, but there are other ways to 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 make still make money on it. Yeah, it, it, it's it's certainly just one of these things here with kind of the year of the running back and getting a little push now for uh, MVP as well. So he's I don't know. MVP. He's not winning I, MVP. I, I don't think he is either. I don't think, but I know, I know his price for MVP has gone down uh, dramatically. So. Uh, no MVP play, but I, I think the offensive player of the year. It, we'll, we'll see what happens Sunday. I, I still ultimately think that it will be, it will be Barkley. But we've got two MVPs who are about to join us in the gambling group chat: Sammy P, Will Hill, Jeff, and myself. Gambling group chat, uh, Thanksgiving weekend style. Enjoy. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, from the, your friends here at the gambling group chat. Myself and Jeff joined, as always, by Will Hill and Sammy P hopping in this week for a special Turkey Day NFL style. Happy to have uh, Sammy P back. What's uh people people want to know what what's up with our guy the bartender he's actually having an unbelievable year until last weekend because that could have been the reversal of fortunes he did have Minnesota minus three and a half that's a winner yep. that gets ripped out of your hand so a two and one weekend becomes a one and two weekend and now maybe the tilt kicks in. <laughs> why do I why do I know, guys? I, I close my eyes. Why do I know he's gonna come Dallas on Thursday? I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> no Tommy DeVito. He he knows. No, no, no uh no Tommy Cutlets probably. Drew Locke is in the house for this game Thursday, Sammy. He's uh he's gonna be in the Cowboys for the big win in, big win in Washington. Oh, I can see it right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, Tommy DeVito doesn't even look like he's making the trip down. So it does look like it's going to be Drew Locke and everybody who had all those uh, giant alt-unders and giant worst record. Look, I don't think the Giants are very good, but at least they have an opportunity to win a game uh, with Drew Locke at quarterback. But we'll start it with the uh, the first game uh, on Thanksgiving. Bears at Lions. This number has moved. We were just talking about it recently uh, before we uh, started the call. We're looking now at a... Uh, Nine and a half, uh, mostly. There's an eight and a half at a sports book in Vegas. Uh, this teaser thing is, range. Uh, well, what was that? What was that, my friend? Te- teaser range. Now they're they're daring they us. Are in teaser. I, I thought I thought you might have said it's su- subject to change. I, I wasn't sure. No, uh, subject to what, change. What that what that rhyme always. was. I think, but the odds are always a uh, subject to change. But as of this recording right now, we're seeing a. Uh, uh, mostly nine and a half, and there is an eight and a half. So this thing might not be done uh, coming down. The, the Lions obviously losing last year on uh, Thanksgiving Day, and that was a, a major uh, death knell to a lot of people in Survivor. I would think that the Lions are probably going to be another very uh, popular Survivor pick because obviously the Circus Survivor, uh, you need to use these games on Thanksgiving as a given week. So uh, I, I would imagine if, if you've used Kansas City, uh, you've, you've got to use Detroit here, or you maybe get a little uh, a little game theory. Uh, 
will we we it seems like we keep saying every week like the lions can't continue to keep doing this the lions can't continue to keep doing this uh but they continue to keep doing this in different fashions are you two part question and i guess jeff and and uh sammy can can chime in afterwards like do you think that they can continue doing this uh, do you like anything in this game side or total and is there a little bit of a fear that maybe the Lions are peaking a bit too soon? I think the Lions have been great. Um, you could say they're peaking too soon, but they kind of need to because Minnesota's got two losses and Green Bay's got three. I mean, it, it's weird, and we'll talk about the Green Bay game coming up. Uh, it's weird to be eight and three like Green Bay and have no chance at winning a division and be comfortably in third place. Um I liked Chicago. I I was of the mindset of wait, people are just going to bet the Lions. It's Thanksgiving. There's two things. There's a trend of favorites doing well on Thanksgiving, which I'm not a huge trends guy, but this one makes sense because, hey, when, when is a favorite flat? Um, like um, on a Sunday, one o'clock in the afternoon, when they're playing a the team, they're off the radar. This is prime time. It's a standalone game. It's Thanksgiving. The crowd's behind you. So the favorites usually aren't flat on Thanksgiving. Uh, the other thing, too, is there's just a lot of recreational money. People are home. They're on the couch. They're having a couple drinks. They're eating. They want to throw in a few bets, $50, $50 bet, $100 bet. Who do those people tend to bet? They bet the favorites. So those lines usually go up. And throw in the fact that Detroit has dominated. I thought this would close 11, 12. It's gone the other way. That being said, the case for Chicago, an eight and a half point, you still want to play it? I'm not sure. They played Detroit well. If you look last year, they beat them 28 to 13. And the game before, they led by 12 with four minutes to go. They turned Goff over five or six times. Goff threw five picks. So can the defense uh, you know, get to Goff? Can they make Goff make some mistakes? Uh, Williams looked better last week. So, Sammy, there is a case for Chicago. But at eight and a half, I don't know if, if you just missed the best of the number here. On the morning show this week, I said, as I place the bet, we do a three-hour show Monday through Friday. I said, I hate this, but I have to do it. It was Bears <laughs> plus 10 and a half. If you don't believe me, check the tape. <laughs> at, at nine and a half, eight and a half, Jeff. You should be listening to the Sammy P show every day, damn it. Yes, everyone at, does. At nine and a half, I eight and a half, I'm no. not I, – I need – I needed 10. So 10 yeah. and a half started to come down. You're at that point now. There will be buyback. There will be that resistance on Detroit. Day of the game, if there's an eight and a half, my guess is that it gets cleaned. So, look, I, I was texting with Murray. I know Murray's not here, but he's here in spirit. He did text me this morning, and I said, what's up with this game? And he goes, our sharpest group took ten and a half and took ten. Now everybody's moving through the ten. There will be buyback on Detroit. The question is at what number and how patient do they wait? Every week we keep saying the same thing, right? Like it's the Lions are due for one of these games where they don't bring their A game and where, where they don't cover. And we thought last week was that week, right? They're in Indianapolis, Indianapolis off a win. Richardson playing a little bit better. And what they do, the game wasn't even close. They haven't allowed, I think, a touchdown in, in like six quarters. I mean, the Lions defense is playing so well right now, too. I'm not jumping in front of the train. I, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking the Bears in this game. Uh, the Lions, with the way they run the football, with the way their defense has been playing lately, with all the weapons they have, they got so many weapons. If you take away one, there's two other guys to worry about. If you if you take away one running back, there's another running back. Their That's offensive the line thing, is really yeah. good. Like it's it's like, like they're just hard to, to stop. And so to me, especially this number now, you said eight and a half, Sammy. There's eight and a half right now. Um, I'd go Lions eight and a half, absolutely. Well, think about this, though. The injury report does Montgomery. matter. And Taylor Decker, one of their tackles, did not practice on Tuesday. Khalif Raymond did not practice. He's one of their joystick receivers. They also had limited practice from Montgomery and St. Brown. That's on Tuesday. We're taping this probably yeah. during practice right now. We do not know the status of Montgomery and Brown. If those guys don't play, it is a different offense. And think about this. As bad as the Bears were last year in totality, Justin Fields carved them up on the ground. The one game, he had 58 and a touchdown. The other game in Detroit, he rushed for 104 yards, and the Bears lost by five, a game they should have won. Yep. Bears should have been 2-0 against the Lions last year. If the quarterback can run, you can hang around against Detroit. Sammy, when you get a plus 10.5 and, and you get a good number, do you, do you let it ride or you hit the cash-out button? I usually cash out, yes. Okay. For more than $15, hey, though, usually. Hey, hey, if you make a profit, that's all that matters, right? You're just making a profit. Right. So you're Man, plus. Man, you're plus for the bet. Be 
Yeah. I don't, for the record, I don't cash out. <laughs> just want to clear that up. It, 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 it's it's so funny because I had a, it, it, you, you're talking about cash outs here. Like I had a situation with a, a bet that I had made on a conference. It was a bonus bet, conference title, uh, three teamer, like Tulane to win the, the American, Colorado to win the, the Big 12. And Georgia to win the SEC, and like, and it, I was actually back in Ohio this past weekend, so the cash out option popped up for me because I had made it initially in Ohio, and it was a two hundred dollar bonus bet boosted uh, one of the one of the one of the books, and it was offering me a six hundred and twenty seven dollar cash out option, so better than three to one on my money, and at the time going into the day. It wasn't looking like the, op- the the odds for Georgia to get to the SEC title game were looking good again there. And I'm, and I'm like, yeah, Colorado, I mean, yeah, they have Kansas could be a tough game today. Uh, who, who, like Tulane, I feel good about. I'm like, I'm, but what am I, I'm not getting, why, what, what is three to one on that, on the two mean to me? Like it's, it's paying five figures. Me, who never, who knows in this dumb sport? So uh, I didn't cash out. And then obviously, of course, Georgia winds up in the SEC championship game. Colorado now is probably the team on the outside looking in, but yeah, the, the math just didn't make it worth it. But I, w- I was going to say, Jeff, when you were talking about the, the lineup and Sammy with all the, the, the injury moves, like, Montgomery not playing. I don't know if that's a huge deal. I mean, Gibbs is is fine. It, it does take away maybe uh, some of the effectiveness if Gibbs has to play every down. But maybe maybe you look at some of these player props. I mean, I'm sure they've been adjusted accordingly or not even posted yet, just because we don't know about Montgomery. But uh, that that might be a way to look at this game. Yeah, I I I don't know. I I can't I can't take eight and a half with the Bears right now and. Uh, I don't know. I might just I'll, I might just sit this one out and uh, enjoy my appetizers on Thanksgiving Day. You're uh, you're not going to tease it. I know, boy. I, Sammy and I are teaser guys. I don't know if I'm Jeff is. Well, Jeff likes guy. the tease college. Doesn't that just look like too good to be true? Like, how does the Lions leg of that teaser? I know you got to find a partner, and maybe that's right. a tricky part. But Lions minus two and a half. It just doesn't that look too good to be true? Or do Lions minus two and a half and take like the the Colorado Buffs down to ten and a half. Good, good <laughs> yeah, little cross little, little cross sport parlay there. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's well, just well, hard. It's so hard. The Lions ruined so many things for me. Last year, same year. thing. Last year, same thing. Big favorite. Oh, right. Last, well, I'm thinking like 10, 15 years sure. ago when you're taking seven and a half, they're down 10. Stafford's knocking at the freaking door. Yep. You need a touchdown. He throws a pick. You lose the bet. Probably more than you should have bet. And then Joey you sit Harrington down. strip sack. Oh, then you sit down and your family's like, so how's school? And you're like, oh my God, I just lost $500 on the Lions. I don't want to talk about school right now. <laughs> what, would be that, that, what would be the other, other options for your, uh, to, to marry that to in a teaser? Like uh, the Washington is, is minus six against Buffalo. Tennessee. The, the Buffalo. Bills Buffalo minus seven. Minus against, one. Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad one. I, I wouldn't feel great about uh, Tampa. They basically to win no. the game in Carolina. Like, Buffalo's the one. There, I don't think there are many. Uh, like, Broncos. Like, Broncos, too. Bronco, yeah. or, no. or, or could you tease? Uh, you think San Fran's going in there and winning? No. It's supposed uh, to be I cold. just don't know about some snow there. Yeah. yeah. You want to tease Atlanta up to over a touchdown? Oh. <laughs> your, no jets, your Jets are a long leg at the plus two. Yeah. You want to go the other. See, that's, that's the problem with the tease. You got to find. Yes. Uh, and another leg to to marry it right. to, unless you wanna, unless you wanna tease the old New York Football Giants up to uh to nine and a half in our uh, Super Six game of the day, the second game on Thanksgiving. Uh, Super Six, as always, sponsored by DraftKings. Column will be coming out obviously at some point on Wednesday or Thursday morning when it get posted. And of course, we're gonna want to know what will the outcome of the uh, the Dallas Giants game be. And certainly, I think it's kind of hard to make a. A, a bit of a prediction on this game now, not knowing for sure we, we can assume Drew Locke is going to play. Uh, Dallas looked so much better, uh, at least late in that game against uh, Washington on Sunday. But still, it, it, it's Cooper Rush and a defense that has had some problems giving up the big play. You kind of maybe break it down a little bit more. Yeah, they did get kick return for touchdown and special teams, and they really didn't do a hell of a lot. Uh, offensively for most of the game, but still, this is a bad, bad, bad Giants team. Uh, it f- still feels potentially like an under to me if I were looking to play one thing here. 
I don't know, uh, Sammy, if you got any thoughts on uh, Giants Cowboys here, other than uh, maybe a little purse. Uh, if you're an early eater on Thanksgiving, maybe a little uh, post uh, post turkey meal, a uh, little nap there. I saw the over get hit today from 37 over. up. The problem with 37 is that 2017 is a push, right? It's very hard to stay under such a low number. And I don't know, guys. I watched Dallas and Washington. I, Dallas can't stop anything. Their defense is horrible. Giants are nothing special on defense. I also think this is something to discuss. Does the league want a 10-6 final on Thanksgiving? I know that we don't want to go too deep on this, but I imagine we're going to see some PI. We're going to see some touchdowns. I like it. It's such a low number. 37 and a half is not. We saw 36 and a half in a snowstorm get over. This is indoors. There's no weather. There's no wind. And Drew Locke can throw the ball down the field. Maybe he throws the ball to the other team for a touchdown. I I am on the over. I like over. When you do sit down for dinner, Sammy, are you going to wear your tinfoil hat at the table or are you going to take it off? <laughs> uh, I haven't decided yet. I might cast the tinfoil hat out too. Uh, with the veto, this was for me. This was the Cowboys with Locke uh, and Jeff. You know this from playing the league. These teams generally, when they're when they get so embarrassed and it's so public how embarrassed they they usually I think play extra hard. I think you'll get the Giants' best effort for whatever that's worth. Um, yeah. and, and if you're looking for props, maybe neighbors because neighbors look. He's their best player. He's mouthing off. Hey, I'm not getting the ball. This is a disaster. They probably make it a point to feed him pretty early. So maybe some neighbors' props is worth it. Yeah, uh, I would only look to the, to the Giants just because I think Locke look. He's nothing special, but he's a legitimate like NFL backup quarterback. He had his moments last year for Seattle. He's okay. DeVito, I don't think, is an NFL quarterback. We talked about that last week. So I don't know. I mean, if I'm dying to bet it, no, but it, it'd be Giants or anything. It'd be neighbors props, if anything. And it is a little weird. As much, you know, as Dallas, we make fun of them. They, you know, they don't, get, they don't get to the Super Bowl. They don't win the Super Bowl. They're usually good. Like with Romo, they were good. With Dak, they're good. It, it is unusual to sit here on Thanksgiving. And Dallas just be awful here, Bear. No, it, it really is, and it, we always people criticize uh, Jerry Jones and the organization, but uh, he was very hesitant in, in making changes uh, on his coaching staff and the organization. He usually lets things play out, and for for better or for worse, like I said, it, it typically has worked out uh, in a sense that you're, they are usually involved in a in a playoff race or a wild card or or a division title. So clearly, it's been a while since they've won something of significance, but. Um, Jeff, did you have any uh, Thanksgiving uh, thoughts here? I mean, I would just say I would play Tracy over 63 and a half rushing yards for the Giants. I would play Malik Neighbors over 67 and a half receiving yards. Uh, last week, the Cowboys were able to kind of keep in check the commander's rushing attack, but we know that's not what they've done all season. The, and the Giants want to run the football, right? We know that because they don't have a quarterback that, that's trustworthy. And you, we'll mention, I think it was Will, about Neighbors. Most often when someone complains about not getting the ball next week, guess what they do? They get in the ball the first seven plays in a row. Not that extreme, obviously, but right. they try to find a way to get in the ball. So uh, that's the way I play this game. Otherwise, I got nothing side in total. Um, hopefully it's entertaining. So it's a bridge between the lunch meal and the dinner meal. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Jeff, you go what early, early two meals you go? So, uh, yes, yeah, so I basically try to make it like uh, I'll fry my turkey. We'll probably have like a lunch at one, and then I'll just eat the leftover turkey again for dinner. Okay. And I have extra legs and wings that I fry as well. So I fry like the 13-pound turkey. We take it out. While we're eating the turkey, I fry the legs and wings. So last, it basically makes sandwiches for many days in a row after the after the original turkey feast. We really need a video on Friday of yeah. you constructing. We do. The leftover sandwich. I am. I am not even kidding. I want it. I need it. I need to see it's you. Very like, simple. I need to see you like, you know, like putting the like. I could just. You're gonna love building this sandwich, and I want to live through you building this leftover sandwich. The question we is, do, do I put stuffing on it or not? It's Would up you to put, you. It doesn't yeah. matter. I'm not going stuffing. Then like, then turkey. Then cheese. Then I like mayonnaise. So put a little mayonnaise on there. Mayonnaise. You know, people don't like sometimes. It's okay. The, uh, the other thing which is is gone, I don't want to say viral, but uh, I was listening to uh, SVP and Stanford Steve a couple of weeks back, and I guess Stanford Steve saw, saw some videos somewhere where like people now are like combining 
like the stuffing and the turkey and like mashed potatoes and putting it in like a waffle maker and like Ooh. making it this waffle and then mm. just dousing it in in gravy like the, that is something that uh appeals to me i, I might mm. maybe go a little lighter on the potatoes but you could like mix the stuffing and the and the turkey together hammer it down Maybe you go some, maybe you go cranberry sauce as a topping for part of it. And then just the other is like the gravy boat. Just say when that, 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 that that's also another thought for, uh, for maybe that second meal or a little, uh, a, a little Friday morning breakfast. You get away with a uh, stuffing, stuffing. Another, uh, another food point, And I mentioned this, I think before, maybe last year, uh, look, Turkey Thanksgiving, they go together, but nobody's going to knock on your door and arrest you. If you eat something other than, uh, turkey you could throw a prime rib we got a prime rib and a turkey you're gonna have a little bit of oh, both. So i know people just stick to the turkey ham look to me prime rib is a good like minus 250 favorite over ham but to each their own if you like ham ham <laughs> turkey there's a there's we, we restrict ourselves with these rules but there are no rules no well, there are no rules exactly totally right actually my family comes to boston a week after now so my dad calls it serbian thanksgiving because it's a week later is what it is we do turkey and lamb Nice lamb, lamb oh. on the smoker. Delicious. So for Thanksgiving, we go down to the Cape. There's a family we really love to death. They do New England Thanksgiving, which is an appetizer of oysters and lobster. It sounds and terrible. And then a fried turkey. Oh, yeah. It's the, I don't have to do anything. Nothing. Except eat. Show up and eat. We we haven't got any invites for that for any of those events, guys. Nope. That's, that, that, that's you wouldn't show up, Jeff. No, but I'd like to be invited. No. Not, yeah. You're, you're, you know me well, Bear. You, you, well, you you know where there's going to be some smokers uh, Thanksgiving night in Green Bay. Uh, we're looking at a high of 31, a low of 19 uh, in Green Bay. Certainly, we all know the Dolphins and Tua's cold weather woes. Uh, but it looks like some the, the Dolphins have taken a little bit of money here. They opened at three and a half. We're down to three across the board, 48. Looks like the wins are around 13. I know Green Bay has a a good record, but are they good? Yes. Like that should not have been a game last week against San Francisco. And like the the, the Niners had a had the ball with a chance to cut that to seventeen fourteen. I I don't I I see Green Bay and like I just it's almost like we have a little bit too high an opinion of them because of the playoffs last week. I mean, Love made a couple of throws again that could have been picked off. Like, I don't know. But do I want to back the Dolphins here? No. I would probably look at the under here just because I'm not sure how much success the Dolphins are going to have moving the ball in cold weather. So under 48 would be the, uh, the what I would look at here, guys. I share your sentiment about the Packers. We've been talking about this for weeks. They get a little too much benefit for the doubt. Love gets too much benefit for the doubt. Uh, a late win against the Texans and the Jags, and last week against the 49ers G League team. It's you know okay, they they blew them out, but you know if Debo doesn't drop a ball that leads to an interception, who knows where that game goes? They're probably still going to win. But I just can't do it with two. I know it's simple. I know it's maybe lazy to just say, hey, two in the cold. I'm betting against them. There was a game where I think it was a Saturday night game two years ago against the Bills. It was a really good game. I think it was right around Christmas. We actually snow. played well, but that was yeah. not. Yeah, it was in the like light snow. It wasn't really bad conditions, and this is cold, but you're not like dealing with the wind or the uh, rain or the snow, but I don't know. I just don't think he has the arm strength when it's like 18, 19 degrees out. And by the game time, I think it, we're, we're starting to look at low 20s, high teens. I've seen it too many times. If he beats me, he beats me. But I, I'm just going to, I am going to fade the, the Dolphins in the cold weather, two in the cold weather. Kind of a soft, warm weather team anyway. I don't feel great about it. I does you're kind of in the back of my mind. Does Green Bay really need the game? They can't win the division. They're probably in the playoffs. Miami playing to get in but to me it's the packers uh, I, I think the cold weather is enough to keep me off miami here sammy i haven't made a bet yet after a bottle of whiskey i might get involved tomorrow this is All the right. late one on thursday right i mean it kicks off at 8 20 so yeah i might i might dabble a bit the stat that's been thrown around all week to a zero and six straight up when it's 46 degrees or colder i have seen that all over the internet this is on the si.com page the dolphins portal 0-6 when it's 46 degrees or colder. Not a big sample size, but also no wins, guys. <laughs> so 0-6 is, is an interesting nugget. You also, though, when you look at the board, why is this hanging on three? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not three and a half. It's three. 
three at Pinnacle, three at Circa, three at Superbook, DraftKings, a juice, three, three offshore. Somebody somewhere is betting Miami. It's it's not me. I, I'm not betting the game at all until tomorrow, which I just told you about. <laughs> Jack Daniels is betting the game. Alcohol. Jack Daniels will be erased tomorrow for sure. I'm, I'm going in with a whole bottle. It will not make it through the night. Um, but Barrett hasn't moved off off the three. You would think I know we with this two a stat and this two a narrative, we you'd think we'd see three and a half, maybe four. It's sitting three right there. Come and get it. Can uh, we interest anyone in uh, Dolphins plus two thirty to make the playoffs? Mm. Sitting here at five and six. So they still have a lot of cold weather games. They got to they got to go to Cleveland on a Sunday night. Still, I'm not sure the Browns are very good. They gotta go to and the they, still have to go, well. they still have to go to the Jets in the final week of the season. Like these are the if we're going to fade them in this game because the weather, we have to fade them other games because the weather. Look, I, to your question about the Packers guys, they're sixth in DVOA. It's not the BL end all, but like they're a highly efficient yeah. team. Hey, is like, that, they, is they, that like, all, they are a good team? Time, is that all time DVOA through eleven games, or it, is that just it, in general? It is yes, all time yes, and, and they're subject to change as well. Uh, but nonetheless, I think the Packers team actually is good. I think they're a good football team, and yes, sometimes you win close games and you lose close games, and they've had the fortune to win some games that they shouldn't have won. I mean, they they were minus three in turnovers against Houston, right? That's not a game you typically win, but they did pull that game out. But their losses are are two point loss to the Vikings, five point loss to the Eagles. Like they've lost close games too. So I think they're just better than the Dolphins. Their 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 rush offense is really good. The Dolphins defense doesn't stop the run very well. I, I kind of like the matchup for Green Bay outside of just hey, two doesn't play well in the cold, which is true. And so uh, I like the Packers to cover here. Uh, maybe more a little bit later for this one. Jeff, you had an interesting take um, on one of your other shows earlier in the week about the Chiefs. Uh, um, and people Jeff had an interesting it, like, take? I know, it's, yeah, it's odd. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I, 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 well, I want to give him a little bit of... It, it's a Thanksgiving, bit of it's not April I, Fool's I, Day. Yeah, I know. I'm 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 a big softy around around the holidays and just kind of <laughs> spreading joy and just compassion and just giving people the benefit of the doubt and trying yeah. to make everybody feel good. But uh, share your 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 comment that you made the other day about the Chiefs and and that loss certainly. Yeah. Out, well, they won. And they did, and they won. They, Close. It, okay. it, it felt like a loss, right? I mean, Andy Reid right. is in the post game, uh, in, in in the locker room telling guys to hold their head up. <laughs> like that's the stuff you after a loss. Like and, and after even after the go back and watch the the uh the game winning kick. No one celebrated, but like they just won the game and I was there. Like the Chiefs sideline two weeks ago when they blocked the kick to win, or was it two weeks whenever it was, they rushed in the field, they were cheering and whooping it up. And in this game, they just walked to the the middle of the field, shook everyone's hand and walked out. Like there was no excitement whatsoever. They're up 20 to six. I texted you guys and the cream hunt prop did end up hitting, but I was like, they're going to cheat the air out of this game. They're, they're dominating. And all of a sudden it's a three point game. And Mahomes gets up at the podium and he says, I mean, that's a blow someone out for once. I mean, that's if we just finished a game. And so this is a 13 points on Friday. It's a lot of points. Um, but the chiefs at some point, they're, they're talking about blowing someone out. Is it the Raiders team? The Raiders stink. I hate the Raiders, and I they hate don't have a quarterback. Um, I'm, so I'm not them, betting man. the Chiefs in this game, but it's the first time I've heard them in two years talk about like the need to actually put someone away, um, and they might actually do it this weekend. Well, I changed the channel. Team. I was to say I changed the channel. Is the guy in the Raiders last week is putting the ball towards the one inch line? They are down ten. <laughs> they're getting six, and I said, "Wow, bear with a nice cash." I changed the channel. I don't know what happened after that, but. I uh, hope you uh, hope you cashed in nicely on that one last week with the Raiders. Yeah, no, it worked. I worked out well with the with the Raiders getting uh, getting six. There it was uh, uh, an easy an easy no sweat win. Cost me a cost me a five and two week in the fo- Friday football invitational. There, I'm up to second place. It should be uh, even closer. There you go. Yeah, Desmond Ritter, come on, just run the just get under center and run the damn ball in. But well, that's yeah, two <laughs> weeks in a row where they should have covered because I had them two weekends ago. They're catching eight against Miami. Miami is running the clock out, and then McDaniel goes, let's call the play action to Jonu Smith for 57 yards. <laughs> They're running out the clock, and then the Dolphins score a touchdown to put it outside the number. Need a clearly, new pair of Capris. Clearly, I'm over it. I'm not on the NFL show that often, so I thought I'd just vent Love about it. that. <laughs> um, can we talk about – I know this isn't exactly a side or a total, but I this coach of the year market to me is fascinating. And mm-hmm. I have the DraftKings odds up right now. So Detroit is ten and one. Kansas City is ten and one. 
Mm -hmm. Buffalo is nine and two. Mm -hmm. They're all right there. Mm -hmm. Why is Dan Campbell plus 160 and Sean McDermott is, well, he was 25 to one this morning, finally got hit down to 16 to one. Even at that gap, even at a $15 gap, $14. Why is Dan Campbell plus 160? I don't get it. Sean McDermott is plus 1600. Go down a little bit more. Go down one more leg. Philly is nine and two. Nick Sirianni is 50 to one. I, I just I don't understand it, it, how this market it's a is popularity priced. it's a popularity yeah. award right Sammy like people don't think McDermott for whatever reason is a great coach and they think it's a Josh Allen thing right yes. Josh Allen makes the plays for them and McDermott's a defensive coach and so it's Josh Allen you know th- they don't have a weekly video they put out on Monday morning of Sean McDermott in the locker room giving a two and a half minute speech. After every win, they 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 had that for for Dan Campbell. Like I'm not saying Dan Campbell's not deserving of the award. Everyone thinks Sirianni's a bum, and they win and they win in spite of Sirianni. So those narratives matter, I think, for these awards. Well, How great is it going to be when the Eagles beat the Lions in the NFC Championship game? I hope it happens. I have some futures there, but Buffalo. Look at Buffalo. Buffalo plays at Detroit. Buffalo also, well, San Francisco sucks now, so that's not. But if Buffalo goes to Detroit and wins, yeah, what does that market look like? And I, I get what you're saying. We say, well, this coach has this quarterback and this coach has this quarterback. Dan Campbell has the most talented roster in football. And they also went to the NFC Championship game last year. Yeah. So if we're going to dock Andy Reid for having a great team, why are we not docking Dan Campbell? If they voted today, I think Peyton would win. That's what I, I was going to say. Really? I think- I think we're looking at either Peyton or or uh, O'Connell, Tomlin. O'Connell. Tomlin, Tom, Tom Tomlin probably can't win right now anymore. Tomlin can't win right now, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. I just think and it's Gam- interesting. Campbell yeah. at plus 160, I would never bet. No, we were doing the same thing last year. Campbell was way too short all year, and it it was never like it never made sense. Everyone kind of thought Detroit was going to be good. They were, I think, favorites in the division. So yeah, it's it's a, the popularity, I guess, of the coach. The people like him. People like the sound bites. Uh, the team is good, but I'm with you. That that number doesn't make sense. I think I think Peyton should be the short shot. And our guy Gannon drifted out to ten to one. So if, you know, I know that was got to like five to one, six to one in some spots. Back up to ten to one. I, it's terrible. That was a tough one. But look, they weren't going to run the table. Uh, it no. comes this week is big because they play Seattle. I think next week they get them at home. That division, you might, I think ten will definitely win it. Nine, if you have the right tiebreakers, might win it. Now, will nine, will nine be enough if he goes nine and eight? Would he win Coach of the Year? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But if he won the division, I don't know. It's it's a fascinating race. A lot of good candidates. Uh, any anyone in that division, I think, would sign up for ten right now. And then yes. I, I, I'd sign if I'm San Francisco, I'd sign up for nine right now uh, as well. Speaking of. Uh, just buddy Nick Sirianni, the uh, Eagles going on the, the down the uh, down ninety five there to the Ravens on uh, on Sunday should be a really entertaining game, maybe a potential Super Bowl preview. Uh, Ravens minus three in a total of fifty one and a half. Uh, again, looks like a. Uh, I'd, I'd love to get some uh, input from John Murray here at some point. Like like what do we. Uh, we see in here like this this looks like it's just going to be one of those really highly uh, bet games and and i'm not sure the book will need one side or another uh, my guess is at three you're probably going to see more more money on the ravens i would assume uh sammy but i, I might be interested in taking the eagles here plus uh plus three in baltimore uh obviously their offensive line and, and saquon have been playing great uh, defensively, I think they can give that Baltimore offense uh, some problems. Look, the, the, the Chargers were very much in that game on Monday night. I mean, Quentin Johnson dropped a couple of balls. There, the, the outcome of that game uh, could have been very. J.K. Dobbins got hurt um, in, in that one as well. I see, L.A. Chargers were in that game. Philly is just playing well right now. Uh, I would, uh, I would strongly consider taking the Eagles plus the three and. I mean, not waiting on a three and a half just in case this moves, but this this feels like one of those big one of those late afternoon games in Vegas where the book's gonna really really be, be in good shape. So I would imagine they'll get good two way action on this one. Yeah, it's early in the week. I mean, we're taping this on a Wednesday. It, it's hard to really know what the books are gonna need when this game isn't until Sunday. It's Sunday four twenty five, so a lot of action still to come through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um. I'm very impressed with Philly's defense. And there were some people that were saying last week, oh, they're a little overrated. They shut it down 
That Mitchell, the corner from Toledo, is outstanding. He is. Outstanding. Um, and doesn't get the love that maybe he deserves, although he is creeping up on Jared Verse for the rookie of the year on defense. Fangio needed about four to six weeks to figure that defense out. And if you look at all the advanced metrics, the Eagles are now top five in EPA per play on offense and defense. That's a top five offense and a top five defense. It's so funny. I, I have this habit now, whether it's fine bomb on Monday after an Alabama loss <laughs> or it's WIP in Philly after an Eagles loss. I remember vividly, guys, listening to WIP in Philly after the Eagles lost to the Bucks in Tampa, 33 to 16, to fall to two and two. The local show at the time I was listening said, This team is soft. They suck. They're not making the playoffs. They haven't lost since. Haven't lost since. Seven straight games. I, you know what? I'm gonna bet Sirianni fifty to one. That's what I'm doing right now. Wow! I'll be right back. You're 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 a bolder man than me. And I, I don't think in that in that stretch either they allowed more than seventeen points in that stretch. 16, 3, no. 17, 23, 6, 18, 20. I thought it was rude for the Ravens to petition the league to have Quentin Johnson try to play for the Eagles this week. I, I didn't think that was really nice at all. Um, <laughs> kind of travel with them. Uh, I like the over here. I, Harbaugh usually gets his teams up for these spots. I, I know it's a trend out there that Lamar, when he's like a three-point or less favorite, does really well, which would speak to the idea that like uh, big games he steps up. Remember, like the Chargers, he you know he plays well after a slow start and they win. And the Bills are going to do they smash it home, which looks even more impressive now. So Harbaugh gets his teams up for these home games. Lamar tends to play well in these games, although he doesn't play well, you know, against the Steelers in the playoffs or whatever. Uh, I, I just like the over. To me, Baltimore is an over team. I think both teams move the ball. To me, 50 and a half, 51. I could see a 28, 24, 31, 28 type of game. I think both coaches are aggressive, too, because we saw Harbaugh go for it on his own 16 yard line on fourth down. Harbaugh knows he needs to score. He knows he doesn't have a great defense. Sirianni's aggressive. I think this is a kind of a, a hold serve game where these teams try to match each other. So I know Philly runs a lot, which slows down the clock, but uh, I want no part of the under here. I lean towards the Ravens winning. I don't want to lay the three. They are off a short week. Uh, but I, I do like the over here. I think it'll be Eagles or nothing. Um, this feels like a field goal game either direction, honestly. Um, these teams are very similar, even though the Ravens' defense is, is a lot worse, but they sort of managed to make up for it by running the football, by controlling the line of scrimmage, right, and, and doing the things that we know the Ravens do so well. So to me, I, I got – I'm. I won't have a wager in this game. I might have a prop or two, but like I'm not going to have a side or total in this game. This be a fun game to watch um, with my turkey sandwich um, for for dinner. So uh, we'll make sure to, to make that happen for you, Sammy. Can can we interest anyone? I, I, the number has actually gone come down quite a bit uh, in the last couple of weeks. We were talking about it a couple of weeks ago. Like Eagles still three to one to win the NFC. Uh, you look at the Lions' schedule. They got Green Bay. They got Buffalo. They go to San Francisco. Like. They still they go to the Bears. They got the Vikings still. It, 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 it's not a lock. You I mean everyone like, is just kind of assuming that this is good. This team's going to go fifteen and two or whatever. Like I, I'm not sure. I think there's still a little bit of meat on the bone there for some uh, for some Eagles futures. Maybe to get that number one overall seed as well, best record, and uh, potentially host that NFC Championship game. You're talking to win the NFC or to be the one seed because there are markets for both, right? Yeah, there are. Yeah, the the market to win the NFC is better. The three okay. one to win the NFC, at least for the draft came from I'm looking right now, plus uh, 250 to be the number one seed. So uh, obviously look around for your, your best price, but that, those are the uh, draft kings. Well, let's try and math it out here because they're going to have to play wild card weekend, and that would be against who? Maybe somebody from the NFC West if they are the two seed? Yeah. Because if you think they're the one, you just bet them to be the one. So like what, what they're a six-point favorite against like a Seattle or an Arizona or what would they be against Green Bay? Probably not even that high if it's Green Bay. I'm just kind of trying to think yeah. out loud and do the math. Then they play yeah. maybe a, a Minnesota or an Atlanta round two in the line. I don't know. Maybe you could just roll it over money line wise. It's interesting because they're if you don't think they're going to be the one, they have to have three wins to make the Super Bowl and likely win in Detroit. So from a math perspective, that's interesting. What's that, what's that number of Detroit? Detroit minus two? Great question. Well, Bal no, Bal they got to be higher because Baltimore's right. minus three. Detroit's got to be ahead of Baltimore, right? 
Yes. What's the question? I'm sorry, I spaced. What, out. Lions, Lions, Eagles, Lions, NFC, Eagles title NFC title game. Title game like we're trying play. to we're trying to map out the path for the Eagles if they're not the one seed. What's the math on like a money line rollover? Like who they play in round one? What's the line? And then you kind of play it out from there. Well, Eagles are at least three and a half at Detroit because Philly's three at Baltimore. Right. Detroit's yeah. higher than Baltimore. Yes. Yeah, and that team, that Detroit team, is built to play in that building, maybe more than any team in the league. Correct. So I I would think they open three and a half and then let the market dictate, but it, it can't be sub three. That's for gimme. sure. Gimme. You're going to give me north of a field goal? Gimme. Gimme. Bears got his go. Randall Cunningham jersey in the back just waiting to break out. You love book, this Eagles team. I like him too. Open? The book of Sammy. <laughs> Look, I have the Eagles before the season to win the NFC. I know you do. So you got a great I number. Hope, I hope they too. win. I, I also need Barkley to win OPOY, and I'll throw a freaking party, and I will invite you all. Uh, that, <laughs> I think that you know, party so, might happen. Jeez, uh, it's yeah, so that funny. Party's going to happen. Well, because we were we were watching Monday night, and I I have a couple buddies on a couple of these tickets, and the one guy goes, "Derek Henry's a bum," and I'm watching Derek Henry's got 20 carries for 140 <laughs> yards. Like that is a actually a really good game for party. a running back. Party Problem is party. Barkley had 250 and two touchdowns. Yeah. It's it's a good bet for now. Uh, I can't wait to lose it in crippling fashion. Steelers Bengals. Speaking of losing in crippling fashion, the Steelers kind of given that game away. The, the Browns did everything they could to lose that game, and Mike Tomlin and the clock management on their Thursday in the snow basically said, "No, we 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 want you, please, we want you to have it," uh, and they did. Here we go again. Bengals last stand. But last stand for the Bengals to to make the playoffs. Like uh, again, this is one of those games where I think. You're kind of handicapping maybe coaching staffs. Uh, Steelers probably have the better coaching staff against the Bengals. I don't know, even though I just kind of made fun of Mike Tomlin and his uh, clock management skills. The Bengals, I think, certainly have the uh, the better offense, better talent. But again, do- doesn't this just feel, Jeff, like Steelers or pass? Like the Bengals just find ways to lose this game. They had every opportunity to win it, it, the Chargers a couple of weeks back. I, I can't. I'm done betting Cincinnati. If they happen to get hot and make the playoffs, great. I've got that bet from a couple of weeks ago. But uh, the Bengals are on the do not bet list for me. It would be Steelers or pass for me, Jeff. So Steelers are an underdog of three points or more. Just sign me up. Check. Just put it in the account. Mike Tomlin, right? That's all he does. We we talk about this so often. Underdog, divisional opponent, 81% covering against the spread. Underdog, divisional opponent. He covers these games all the time. The game Thursday night, we that's the game he loses as a as yeah. a road favorite. It's like the, the, this is a, a a trend, guys. That's happened. Bear, you're you're a, pro, a, a Steelers fan, proxy of your wife. Like you know this. This is what they do, right? But just from a from a, a game perspective, right? Joe Burrow is not as crisp, uh, crisp against Pittsburgh. He's thrown the most interceptions against any team he's played because they pressure him, right? They pressure him. Bengals' offense line is not very good. On the flip side, the Bengals' defense stinks. They're terrible. The Steelers, who, who I think offensively could be hit or miss, um, when they hit, it's really good. When they're miss, it's terrible. But against this Bengals' defense, guess what? They're going to hit. And whether or not you like the way the Bengals are losing, the fact is, guys, they are losing every game they play to a quality team. And again, it's a couple points here and there, but lost the Chiefs, lost the Commanders, lost the Eagles, lost the Ravens twice, lost the Chargers. They've been the Panthers, Giants, Browns, and, and Raiders. Like, yeah, I get it. It's a field goal here and there, but for some reason they keep losing those games and they keep winning the games against bad teams. So, Will, I want Pittsburgh plus three here. I'm not going to bet it. It'd be Bengals or nothing. I just think they're better. This is uh, the last, last, last stand for the Bengals because <laughs> they can we maybe. This time. <laughs> they can, yeah. It's like Jeff. Jeff, we have kids. It's like when you count three, two, one, zero, and you one, those warnings. one and a half, yeah. zero yeah, and a half. Yeah, exactly. This <laughs> the Bengals can maybe lose one more game as long as it's not to Denver, but they mm. basically have to run the table minus a game. I just think they have better players. Again, am I, am I dying to fate Tomlin as a dog? No, but they are off a bye. They do need the game. They are at home. Uh, it'd be bangled or nothing, but haven't bet it, Sammy. Pass, pass, yeah, pass, pass, pass. We, 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 I know one game you uh, will, you might not be passing on. It's our uh, other Super Six game of the week, the the post Thanksgiving Super Six game sponsored by DraftKings. Um, we're going to be asking the outcome of the Vikings and the Cardinals. We hit on it a little little while ago about the Cardinals just laid an absolute egg. Uh, in Seattle, no one. Now they go on the road to the Vikings. We just continue to 
find ways to win. It wasn't pretty against the Bears the other day, but they did ultimately win that game. And um, Minnesota now three and a half pretty much uh, painted across the board against Arizona. It feels like just one of those games where you get the sense Brian Flores knows how to scheme a defense to shut down Kyler Murray from running. And that probably would be would be the key here. Uh, initially, I thought maybe north of a field goal, I'd be on Arizona, but but I think I think this Vikings team, and I, I just trust their defense. Uh, I trust uh, their the, and I tr- I trust the offense here, at least in terms of the running game, to maybe get something going against uh, an Arizona defense, which is giving us some plays of time. And and I may I think maybe Daniel Jones, new Vikings quarterback, will uh, will step in here and have a huge game. Right? Did I did I read that correctly? Daniel Jones now is a uh, yes. member of the Vikings. Yes, and, and he's going to play for free because the Vikings are the reason he got all that money in the first place because that <laughs> playoff game. Uh, I, I actually like Arizona here. Cam Robinson. I don't know if we have clarity, Jeff, on if he's playing or not, but he's the left tackle that came in from the trade uh, with Jacksonville after Darisaw got hurt. If he doesn't play, the backup Quisenberry is not very good. They got pressure a lot late in the game against Darnold. And look, give the Vikings credit. That was a gutty win because if, if that's just a typical Vikings loss. They blow the onside kick. Nobody. Fails to recover an onside kick. You lose the game in overtime after losing the coin toss. Nate got a stop. They got the field goal. So that was a gutty win. They had some third downs. But the hook for me is the key. They have not been impressive these last four or five weeks against the Jags and the Titans and the you know these other teams. Um, so I, I think this will be a good game. I just think this is a field goal game, Jeff. I'll take the uh, the points here. And then they very easily could have beaten the Lions. And, uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, I don't have much on this game. Um, Arizona, on a given week, I don't know what they are. Some weeks they look good. Some weeks they look bad. We get good Cardinals. This game is close. If we get the cause we saw against Seattle, the game is probably not close, right? I mean, it's kind of a silly thing to say, Sammy, but it does feel like the Cardinals are, are pretty much bipolar week to week. And in, in that instance, it's hard to wager on their games. I look at who Minnesota's faced the last four weeks. Those offenses, none of them are good. You got the Colts with Flacco, the Jags with Mac Jones, the Titans with Levis, and the Bears with Caleb. I mean, this is the best offense. If we're going to play the transitive property, this is the best of those five. Um, Cardinals are, what, top 11, top 12 offense in the NFL? And those teams are not. None of them are. Flacco, Levis, Jones, Caleb. You would think this would be the game where maybe Minnesota gets a push, but I've been in that building. Those fans are going to be drinking vodka from the handle. At 7.30, like all, that's all they're going to do is drink terrible vodka all day. And that place is electric. If nobody's ever been to the Death Star in Minnesota, it's a hard place to win a football game. The Metrodome was better. Oh, the Metrodome was great. I mean, no, but sure. But, I mean, very, I, I get we're nostalgic about certain arenas. That's not one of them. Yeah, how uh, was the field surface in the Metrodome, Jeff? We it was field turf. It was fine. It just was the Metrodome. Like there's no no real replay video screen, so you couldn't watch plays afterwards. Uh, it was terribly freezing in there. I don't know if Will's ever been in there many times. Like it's so cold in there because they don't have AC, right? So they have to start very cold, and as it fills up with people, it gets warmer. But you got to warm up. Two hours before a game, with like in the middle of the summer, with sweatpants and hoodie on, like it's it's freezing in there. Many's aren't great. They get very loud. I it was twenty twelve was a, was a good season. We was loud, um, but yeah, I think the new place is a little bit better. I used to love when they had like the in, in the end zone instead of like the end zone being painted, it was like chalk and like it would just like blow and like smudge all over and like yeah, I mean it, it, it just looks so so too I universal. also like the glass fence for baseball just for no the glass uh, for yes. no, plastic was it plastic plastic fence the, for no the, reason the, like the I don't know, just cuz the baggy in right field the baggy, yeah. yeah yeah just cuz is it a home yeah. run is it not a home run yeah but they they, they had the they they were like the left the wall was so low they added that like glass yeah pl- plexiglass Whatever, uh, what a place, and of course, Sam, you know, if it snowed too much, it, it was ruined. So, kind of bad to have an uh, indoor stadium that can't withstand a little snow. Sammy, what do we where, where do we draw the line on like awful bad vodka, like pop off? Is that what we're talking like pop off oh level? Skull, Dimitri, something <laughs> like that. I mean, Dubra. those are both horrible. What was the last one? Dubra, 
Oh, jeez. Ever, oh. Everclear? Is that Everclear vodka? No, Everclear oh, is pure brain. A, yeah, that's got a perception of being high quality, like just knock you on your ass vodka. We're talking like wait, Everclear is good quality. I, I haven't drank in a long time, but that was well, not the way of college. Than Skull and Dimitri and Benchmark. Yeah, I mean, oh, well, I'm sure. thinking like being in college. Like, what can I get for eight ninety nine? That one. Dimitri, spelled wrong. <laughs> and you put it in jello <laughs> spelled... shots so you don't have to taste it. You put it in the jello shots, it's not, not as bad, but the hangover yeah. is still in real. In the jungle juice. Yeah. yeah. Skull and Dimitri. Sounds like a couple members of the Bill Moff- Bill's Mafia were going to uh, be in, uh, in attendance on Sunday night as 49 with Bengals made a last stand. Here we go. This is the last Same stand thing. for the Niners. Now the Niners really mean it, and they're going to come up with a big road win. Like I don't know how they go to Buffalo and win if Brock Purdy uh, can't play. Um, it will be a, an issue for them against a, a Bills team that is uh, rolling. I mean, again, Sam, Sammy alluded to the uh, the odds earlier uh, about coach of the year and, and such. A, the Bills kind of uh, overlooked a little bit right now, but again, every every I was joking with the on the other group text we're a part of uh, Will last night. Like, am I, am I going to just absolutely hate myself again? for buying in on the Niners if Purdy were to play uh, and just having the full seven in my pocket here. like It's it, it's the only side that I could play here at seven, but I just don't know if I can pull the trigger, Will. It comes down to who's playing. I mean, it, it's pretty simple. If Purdy and Trent Williams and Bosa are playing, seven's way too many. If they're not playing, it's not enough. So I don't know that we have this information as we're recording right now. So makes it hard to bet. I do like the Bills as a teaser because you figure even if Purdy plays, he's outdoors in Buffalo, dealing with the sore shoulders, you're going to be able to drive the ball like usual. Um, again, if, if San Francisco got their guys, yeah, they're, they're interesting. But uh, look, it, it's just I mean, here's a little side note. I, I feel like we all follow the NFL pretty closely. I do. I had no idea Brandon Allen was a still in the league and oh, being the Forty Niners backup. When it, we got whispers that hey, Purdy might be hurt, I was like, all right, Dobbs will come in. He's not great, but he'll do okay. Brandon Allen. I'm surprised that Dobbs like didn't beat him out. I'm surprised they don't have a better backup quarterback than that. I thought for sure it was still Tim Rattay. I, like, I don't know why I he was going to come in and rally them through. Well, I they had this. Darnold last year. They've had yeah, Jimmy Jeff G. Like, they've had depth, one point, they've right? had depth at quarterback. I wrote this on Friday, and I, I talked to a guy who bets in Vegas, and he said – Yeah, you did, a, you did a story on what? Um, was it Indiana and Ohio State and the Niners? Is that what, what it was? Yes. I Yes. It was, it was a hybrid. It was an Indiana-Ohio State – and a Niners Packers with I Jeff would... Schwartz, the, the the bow tying it all together. Yes. Hey, I'm Jeff n- Schwartz that game. in that story said Ohio State 31 14. I thought we were going to land right on it. <laughs> so if you didn't read it, here's a snippet from a guy who bets for a living. He says, quote, this is not the Niners team from last year or the last few years. However, nobody's really lowering their power rating because the pedigree is blinding. Well, I think all those sharps that have been betting the Niners all season are done. Same with the Jets. Yeah. I mean, you guys have Murray on this show every week. Niners and Jets every week. Sharps. Yeah. Sharps are not betting the Niners here. The look ahead bear was three and a half. Buffalo didn't even play in this line is seven. I, I think you nailed it, Sammy. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I was going to say essentially, like, if you look at the Niners season this season, don't look at any other season. Look at what they've done this year. I haven't been good in months. I, I haven't been good at any point this season. Lost the Vikings, lost the Rams, lost the Cardinals, lost the Chiefs, lost the Seahawks, lost the Packers. They beat a shorthanded Tampa Bay team by three points with a bunch of special teams problems. And, and that's sort of like where you know it's gone bad. When special teams is just bad too. Can't make a field goal. Muffin punts, like bad things happen with special teams. I just don't think they're a good team right now. Even if Purdy plays... I don't think they're going to win this game. I think I think you just put Buffalo maybe in a in a teaser right now, um, and be done with it, or wait and see. If if you get Purdy in this game, the number drops. You get a better number on Buffalo. You just can't bet Buffalo today. I don't think. I don't, like this is not going to seven and a half, eight, nine, is it? Right. Well, so if, so, if Allen's starting, it'll yeah, it'll but, keep but, going. It, but isn't this already baked into seven that Allen's playing? I think it's a halfway number. Halfway. Like if, yeah. Okay. Halfway. halfway. Okay. Um, so maybe just tease Buffalo for now and figure it out later in the week. Uh, that feels like the best option. I don't think the Niners are winning this game. I, I really don't. If they don't, the season is over. Yes. They're dead. 
Yeah, but last week they had to win too. Like we like these must if you have if you must win a game, you must not be very good. Like you like they had to win last week too. And yeah, they didn't I get agree. it done. Yeah. Anybody want to chime in on Seahawks, Jets, or Colts Pats? No. What? <laughs> no. Yeah, please say, no. That, yeah, if it, please, please no is probably the most apt. We're getting texts already that this podcast is too long, so we could probably I avoid know. those two games. That'd be nice. I know. It's our podcast. But <laughs> my, my name is on it. We control it. We're going to talk <laughs> as long as we want to talk, damn it. Anyway, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. All right, Bear. My fate of the week is going all the way to Monday Night Football. I'm thinking the Browns this week off that Thursday night win against the Steelers. Now they have had a little bit of rest. I get that, but they're just not good, Bear. Like I've I've tried to 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 find ways to be in the Browns this season. Dude, you know you're, that you're not good. They're, they're not. What, what what about them? Like what? what Miles Garrett, fantastic. Jameis Winston is fun to watch. You watch second half of that game. Fumble, terrible interception. Oh, I watched it. Someone else fumbled. Like they, they just have they're a bipolar team, right? They go to New Orleans off a bye and get smoked. Come home and play Pittsburgh on a short week, play the first half of their lives, up big, hold on to win. Now they're going on the road. Denver is good. Denver's a good football team. They're really good on defense. I don't know how the Browns are gonna, gonna score in this game. I don't know how they're gonna score in this game. I really don't think they're gonna score very much. I need to see Bo Nix do what he's doing. Be efficient. Don't turn the ball over. He's getting more comfortable in the offense. The Browns' defense, great great pass rush, good. Otherwise, they're missing their middle linebacker. Like They're just not as whole in the back end of the secondary this season. So I like the Broncos here. I think people look at the, at the Browns and what they did against Pittsburgh, and that's not what they are. Okay, they played one good half of football. That was it. Got to an early lead. Pittsburgh outplayed them in the second half. They, they lost a turnover battle and still won the game. Give me Broncos here, minus five and a half. Yeah, I certainly uh, think the Broncos are a playoff team. We we. Gave that bet out a couple of weeks back. Hopefully people uh, tailed us because it certainly looks like Denver is uh, going to make the playoffs. I um, I kind of joked a little bit before about uh, uh, anybody, any 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 takers for, uh, for, for, for Falcons or Colts, Patriots or Seahawks, Jets. So uh, found another kind of a stinker game for my uh, best bet of the week presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. I took the Saints plus three against the Rams. I, I think the Rams are a little bit overrated. It, it seems like people like them week in and week out, and I just don't see it. Uh, you look at the Saints' schedule coming up, they, there is an opportunity for them to to get to 500 here in the next couple of weeks, uh, and then you still got a game against the Bucs. You, you still got some winnable games. Like There is a chance here that they it's not out of the realm of possibility uh, that they could wind up being a factor in this division because I don't think the Falcons are very good. Um, ever since the knocking me out of Survivor with the loss against Carolina, Saints have played much better. Uh, I took the Saints here plus three uh, against the Rams as my best bet of the week presented by DK Sportsbook. I'll be uh, wishing the best of luck. Um, I <laughs> you, you, want, no, you want no part of that, do you? No part of Saints. No part whatsoever. <laughs> and you're Look, people are going to bet the Rams. It's going to be a very public side. You, you're not going to find many people, I think, publicly going out and betting on the Saints here. Uh, their coach is, is fighting for a job. If he wins in a couple more weeks, Bear, he might get this job permanently, right? Uh, it's hard to argue. Any more toilets? Yeah, uh, he should. I think he has to block every toilet now before every game. Uh, my best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Let's go Thursday night, Bear. Talk about a, a little bit earlier. Give me the Packers minus three here over the Dolphins. Yes, the two a cold thing is a factor, Bear. But I think the Packers are just much better than the Dolphins. I understand the Dolphins' win loss record is is what it is because Tua was out a little bit. But the Packers are sixth in efficiency. They're a good football team. They, they run the football well. They play a good a good brand of defense this season. And I don't want the Dolphins on a short week. They've basically played a bunch of bums the last couple of weeks. This is a real football team in the Packers. The tough part of the schedule starts now where they play a lot of night games on the road in cold weather cities. I like the Packers to run the ball well in this game. Give me Packers minus three here, Bear. I know you think the Packers are a Fugazi team. They're eight and three. I, uh, I disagree with you on that one. So give me the Packers minus three. Yeah, I will be uh, I'll be rooting for Packers and I'll, I'll, unlike unlike you who are just calling people out throughout the podcast today, like uh, inexcusable. I'm going to root for you. I'm going to be the good guy. I said I'm, I'm rooting root for, you for you for the Saints. I'm rooting for the Saints. I said that. You, you, that was you, nice. You, you were very antagonistic today during the uh, the gambling group chat. So I, I don't I don't know. 
I'm not, I'm not, not feeling it, but yeah, we will, uh, hopefully we'll get Packers and under there in that, uh, late night Thanksgiving game. Uh, everybody can cash enough rambling. Let's just get in. We got, we got, we got too much prep to do. We got too much eating to do. We got, we got stuffing. We need to make, we need got fresh cranberries. We need to boil down. We got odors. We need to make, we need to uh, make, make our cheese ball with cream cheese and scallions and dried beef. We got to, we got our veggie dip we need to make. We got we got more and you know what more importantly we got to, we got to order dinner for tonight because we, we're not cooking. So we're gonna order some pizza, but I need to set up a pickup time pizza, for that. Uh, well, we go, I, I know they're gonna we go sushi. We go sushi. Uh and then we go pick up a Christmas tree. That's what we do Wednesday night before uh before uh, Thanksgiving. So you get the Christmas tree before the day night before Thanksgiving. Well, okay. Well, oh, I, 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 now we know I we know the video is gonna be up. I, I yeah, well, explain. We're going to be out of town, though, this year for Christmas. The, the tree's going to be out December 19th, most likely. No, no. Whoa. So we we already have a tree. So the tradition is normally get a tree. But because of the storms and the hurricane North Carolina, in Western North Carolina in the mountains, there are less trees available this year. So we had a tree delivered um, last week, I think. Uh, we just decorated it last night. And we will go tonight, and my kids like having like little baby trees in their rooms. So we'll go tonight and give them a little baby tree uh, in their room. So we do have the big tree already, but like I said, we're out of town. I'm not going to tell you the exact dates because that's my own business. But we will not yeah, be exactly. home for Christmas. We, we, um, we don't want you to be part of that like ex-chief uh, yeah, the, robbery. The, the, where yeah. um, how, how about that? How about the uh, freaking nerve of some people to... Well, look, I mean, this is the, the downfall of social media, right? Is you put your life on social media and you tell people when you're out of town. Now, obviously, they can check the travel schedules. Uh, but I've been told it's a little bit worse than they're leading on to, to be. That's not, uh, it's a little bit worse. Nonetheless, uh, it'll be on the road December 19th, most likely, Bear. December 19th. Uh, that, that's a shame. But I mean, is it? People already think we're weird anyways. This will be the thing. No, it, 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 as, long, as long as we get the video of, of, of your lovely wife dragging it out to the oh, curb, I, I think... I, I think I think we'll all be happy. So okay, good. Appreciate everybody for uh, for listening listening through that, uh, dealing with this. I'm getting we're getting yelled at by by Sully because oh the music's been playing for two minutes. I don't care. It's the holidays. People want music, even if it is our uh, our sting and butt music, whatever. Now I'm getting antagonistic. Appreciate everybody for listening. Uh, wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, our YouTube channel. Uh, Thanks again to everyone, Sammy P and Will, for joining us in the gambling group chat. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, and most importantly, the less you bet, the more you lose when we win.